Hey guys, welcome back. Take a look at this. This is one of the most interesting power supplies I ever came across. Now, I have to admit I didn't open many of these uh, AC adapters for, uh, for laptops, but this thing over here has such an interesting design that I really have to share it. Now this is an AC adapter from Fujitsu Limited and this power supply delivers 19 volts at 5.27 amps. Well this thing is quite beefy. Now when I open this thing up, this is what I came across. This thing is completely enclosed in very thin aluminium. I had to remove one screw and then I was able to slide this thing out. Now, let me get that away. So this is the aluminium housing, very thin, and it completely encloses the power supply, just like that. And when we take a look inside, we can see that the power supply is again wrapped into plastic. And that looks awesome. Now, here's the first very interesting part, and that is these things over here, and also here. What do you think this is? Well, I can tell you, these are thermal pads. These are thermal pads, just like the ones you use in computers. That's amazing. They use thermal pads to get the heat away from the power supply through the plastic, and yes, it's an insulator, but there is no perfect insulation. Then into the metal outer shell, which then sits in here. So this thing is a big heat sink to get as much heat away as possible. And again, the plastic enclosure is an insulator, but you know, these power supplies, they do get hot and there is heat dissipation. And to emphasize the heat dissipation, they used thermal pads. And these things are thick. And they feel very... Um, how can I say that? They feel very expensive. Let's measure the thickness. Now the thickness is approximately yet yeah, 2 millimeter thickness. 2 millimeter thick thermal pads. 1, 2... On the bottom and a third one on top for the main transformer and this is very very interesting now this is a switch mode power supply and you wouldn't think that transformer temperature matters for switch mode power supplies it does matter with linear power supplies but that's a different approach we switch the, the power through MOSFET and introduce it into the transformer and a switch power can be much higher than a continuous power, like in linear power supplies. But still, they decided to use a thermal pad to get heat away. And I think that might be the case because they are using, either they're using a transformer core that is slightly too small, so they are essentially driving the transformer in constant saturation, or they noticed that the overall temperature through all the components surrounding the transformer was too high. Because that also changes the performance of the transformer. And this pad is... I, I don't want to damage it. I think it's slightly glued in place. I think I have to be very careful. Now this power supply... Um, I'm not sure if it still works have to take a look at this and we will do that well this is essentially an unplanned video I wanted to do this off camera finally but now that I saw the design and how well it is designed and how interesting it looks uh, it's too good not to make a video about and I just noticed something could it be I think this is the main controller I see. And you know, some ICs, because of uh, heat, they do have metal pads underneath 
to transfer the heat from the chip away and typically this pad is also soldered onto the PCB to get the heat into the PCB into certain uh, metal areas that act as a heat sink. And this chip seems to be designed the way... Oh wait... So either it is designed to have the heat transfer uh, region on top or what I think is actually the case, they decided to flip it around and just bend the legs the other way around. And I think this is right because the chip going to the PCB uh, goes, um, how to explain, the sides go down like this. So I think the chip is flipped and they just bend the legs the other way around. Now this is slightly problematic because now I can't read what chip it is. Because if this thing still works, I don't want to uh, damage it. I don't want to risk damaging it. Because this thing, as I said, it's uh, fantastic. It's 19 volt, 5.2... Yeah, 5.27 amps. But look at that. Look at the amount of silicone they used. Now this is uh, mostly like a silicone type glue. And that's very interesting. So we have our mains connector. It's a two pin mains connector. We don't have ground in here. We don't need ground. We have, what is that? That's an anti C, I I think. We go to a small mains capacitor. We have this over here, which I can't identify. Could also be a mains capacitor. Could some could be something else, I don't know. Then we have our spool for live and neutral filter. We have bridge rectifier onto the heatsink. Bridge rectifier sits over here. Here are two mains capacitors, the typical foil capacitors. Red package tells it. Another spool, another choke over here. What is this thing doing? Uh, input filtration? Maybe an RL circuit for additional filtration? I'm not sure. Why do we have two transformers? Oh, that's interesting. Because we have a single voltage. And here's the... No, this is a... I can see that... 420 volt, 100 microfarad. So this thing sits right above the IC. We have one MOSFET over here. We have another... Is this the same type? I think, yeah, that's the same type MOSFET over here. Another transformer. This should be a diet package, a fast switching diet package, and the secondary side capacitors with a small inductor over here, and the fast switching diet with its own heatsink, this time made from copper. And there is thermal. No, this is not the thermal paste. This is the weird silicone. Now what I think they do here is they, it seems like they are switching this transformer with this MOSFET. Traces indicate that, uh, that's why I'm saying that. Traces go through uh, from the MOSFET to, yeah, they are going into this transformer. And then it seems to be there is some connection between the transformer and this MOSFET, which then goes further up to here. And here's the interesting thing. Now, the transformer I was suspecting to be uh, 
the only transformer switching from our rectified mains to our secondary 19 volt. Uh, this thing, if you take a look under here, this is very typical. If you're switching from primary side to secondary side, so essentially you have your primary mains voltage, then you rectify it. 230 volt is like 300, what, 315, 320 volt DC. Uh, so this side would be your primary, then you have um, an area where there is no component, no trace going through. Only your uh, transformer that switches from primary voltage to secondary voltage to completely isolate the secondary side from prim primary. This is a protective measure. They even have a cutout over here. We have a... this should be... What is this? Is this a class Y capacitor? Yeah, I think this is a class Y capacitor, a second one over here, and this is a spark gap. Now I th think these are the uh, decoupling capacitors because you won't have a spark gap and a MOF at the same time. That makes no sense. And we have another IC over here. I didn't see that. What is that? Oh, that's really not readable. So it actually has two control ICs or two ICs and a third one over here. This is a six pin job. Now this could also be like a, a resistor network like this one. But why do they why do they use two transformers for a single voltage? I mean, in like server power supplies or in computer power supplies, what they do nowadays is they uh, get input rectified, get it to 12 volt with one transformer, then use the 12 volt rail get 5 volt out of it and out of the 5 volt rail they get the 3.3 volt. But here we have a single output voltage so I don't know why they do it in steps. And also the mains capacitor, this is 420 volt, 100 microfarad. It's installed over here. Yeah, really, really complex design. I really wonder why they do this in steps. So if anyone could explain this to me, that would be fantastic, because I have no idea. The only switching power supplies I came across were the ones that use one transformer for one voltage and maybe, and maybe another transformer for the next voltage. I mean, I know about switching power supply circuits, but I never had such a configuration. Now I think what I'm going to do now is power on the power supply to see if it still works. I soldered a cable directly underneath the PCB onto this uh, two-pin connector. I don't have one of the appropriate plugs on hand right now. That's not a problem. And in a moment I will power it up and we'll see and uh, do a voltage reading of the output voltage. And hopefully the power supply still works. But if not, well, that's a shame. I don't know if I'm able to fix this because that's a a uh, very complex design, but for now, let's see if it works. Nope. I hear clicking. That sounds like a short. Uh, let's see if we can see something. Well, I can't see anything. It seems to come from this area over here. Now this is going to be a pain to fix. Okay, now I decided to end the video here because this takes a lot of time to fix uh, if I'm even able to. Uh, there is no obvious damage. There is no obvious arc. At least I did not see any. And it would be a shame to disassemble and to just uh, 
keep the components because this thing is so well designed. I would like to repair it and if you have any idea what could be wrong, what could cause this noise, uh, I would be really grateful for any suggestions. But I think the video is interesting nonetheless because this is a very rare design. Uh, for one, I, I never saw uh, anyone using thermal pads. Uh, two, I never saw anyone using uh, one of these um, metal enclosures. The only thing I saw all the time with these power supplies is uh, as it is right now sitting directly inside and the outer metal touching the sides. But this approach is very interesting and also very interesting is the the two transformer approach. That is something I never saw before in a single voltage power supply. Now I hope you liked the video and if you did please do like. If you have any suggestions about what could be wrong please comment down below. And other than that, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye!